Hello, I am Muhammad Sayyir Akhtar, uh, Resident Neurosurgery at Larry Reading Hospital, Peshawar. Uh, this presentation is based on a case series uh, named uh, Transoral Odontidectomy, Our Experience in a Limited Resource Setup. So the usual indications for transoral odontidectomy uh, are an irreducible midline extradural lesion that compresses the cervical medullary junction. Although the use of transoral odontidectomy has seen a decline recently, uh, due to advances in the posterior techniques, uh, there are still some indications uh, for its use. Uh, these are severe compression due to atlantoaxial dislocation and basilar invagination that cannot be safely managed with a posterior only procedure. An incomplete or non reduction following a posterior approach or ventral compression of, of inflammatory or infectious origin causing progressive neurological symptoms. For this procedure, the patient is positioned supine with a slight trindolumbal position. Uh, the neck is slightly extended, perioperative antibiotics are given. Uh, an oratorical tube is placed with fiber optic assistance. Tracheostomy is only performed in severe uh, cases of preoperative pulvar or respiratory disturbance. Uh, a low profile self retaining transolar oral retractor system is used. Uh, the uvula uh, is retracted away from the surgical field. Uh, the C1 tubercle is palpated and confirmed on lateral image. Uh, midline incision from clivus to C2, C3 intervertebral disc is made. The interior C1 arch and odontide are resected. Uh, an NG tube is placed under direct vision after closure. An additional posterior fusion uh, with occipital cervical fusion or, or C1, C2 fixation uh, is preferably done in the same setting. So what do we actually mean by limited resources in the title of this uh, study? Uh, it's, uh, we work in a setup where a significant portion of our patient cannot afford modern implants or gadgetry. Uh, there is no, uh, we do not, did not use neuromonitoring or navigation for these procedures and we have limited ICU and ICU facilities. And sometimes um, uh, these procedures can be opted as the second best options for the patient uh, because the micro drill and spacers are not always available to our patients. This study was performed in a neurosurgery unit at Lady Reading Hospital, Peshawar, Pakistan from January 2017 to December 2020. 21 patients with atlantoaxial dislocation and uh, basilar invagination were included in this study. Uh, patients related to rheumatoid arthritis, uh, also rheumatidium, trauma, infection and tumor uh, were excluded from this study. So a total of 21 patients included 8 female and 13 male patients. Uh, the mean age was 21 years and the most common presenting complaints were gait instability and upper and lower limb weakness. So five of these procedures were performed in two settings. Uh, transoral odontidectomy and decompression done in one, on one OT list and posterior fusion done on another OT list. Uh, while 16 procedures were done uh, in a single setting. The tracheostomy was only performed in three cases. Uh, the mean preoperative modified Japanese orthopedic association score preoperatively was 8.2, which changed to 11.8 postoperatively. Similarly, uh, the visual and lock score uh, changed from 7.1 uh, to 2.9 postop. Among the complications, uh, vertebral artery injury was encountered in two cases. It was minor injury uh, in both cases and it was managed conservatively in both cases without any uh, neurological consequences. Uh, surgical site infection was encountered in one case. Uh, there was postoperative tongue swelling in one case and occipital bed sores uh, in one case. So a few cases from the series, this one, uh, a case of basilar invagination with uh, C1 assimilation was treated with transoral odontidectomy and occipital cervical fusion. Another similar case, a case of basilar invagination with congenital fusion of cervical vertebrae treated with transoral odontidectomy and occipital cervical fusion. The patients were followed up for a mean duration of six months and the symptoms uh, significantly improved uh, in 90% of these patients. Our conclusions are that transoral odontide resection can safely be performed in a low resource setup. A single set setting surgery is better than a stage surgery and tracheostomy should be avoided especially when ICU bed availability is an issue.